But an extraordinary story, um, Tim, we've got Tim Montgomery with us, uh, former number 10 advisor, that we must really address, and this is the front page of the Daily Telegraph, uh, Nigel Farage, bank account axed as he doesn't align with our values. He's got some documentation from Coots, which reveals basically that, according to them, he is seen as xenophobic and racist. He is considered by many to be a disingenuous grifter. Being associated with Nigel Farage presents a material and ongoing reputational risk to the bank. I mean, this is an extraordinary story, isn't it? It really is extraordinary, Mike. You know, a word we use often, and I'm genuinely shocked by Coots's behaviour. You know, I, I had this old-fashioned idea that banks, you know, basically, people who worked in banks, you know, looked after your money. Yeah. You know, just researched investments, you know, examined the stock market, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the large part of the uh, Coots workforce seems to be spent, you know, they spend their time analyzing the politics mm. of the people that bank with them. And, um, you know, questions to the BBC, by the way, I think, Mike, when this story first broke and Nigel Farage made his uh, accusations, um, Coots issued a statement to the BBC's uh, business editor, and the BBC's business editor basically presented that statement as fact. Yeah. You know, choosing to believe the bank because because I don't like, you know, Nigel Farage. Yeah. And what has transpired is that those banks that, you know, didn't exactly behave well up until the stock market crash still aren't exactly behaving well. Mm. And um, I think it's a sign, really, of a lot of the problems really now in in British industry. The, the difference between a large bureaucracy of a bank or a private business and the state isn't as great as it was. You know, private companies we you know, traditionally thought to be more buccaneering, the state you know, slightly more bureaucratic. But because the state regulates uh, private business so intensively now, the human resource functions, uh, all sorts of regulation which has to be uh, measured in numbers form rather than sort of professional codes of conduct, the, the ethos of the state has infected so many private sector organisations in a way that's more sort of indistinguishable. In, and I think that's the sort of thing that's happening behind this story today. We have a, a politically correct woke ethos that started in the state and the university, and it's creeping through all the private sector institutions too. Yeah. Very sad. It is very sad because, as, as Nigel Farage says, you know, uh, the dossier reads rather like a pre-trial brief drawn up by the prosecution in a case against a career criminal. Yeah. You know, they were checking on his social media output. They were uh, apparently accusing him of being friends with Novak Djokovic, which I don't know whether uh, that is in some way a thought crime, being friends with Donald Trump. I mean, it's entirely a bizarre sort of dossier to even think about putting together at all. I find and, it staggering. And retweeting something from Ricky Base, yeah. one of the country's most popular comedians. Apparently mm. that's wrong too. Right. It's very, very strange indeed. And I mean, the government should, I mean, I'm not one for interventionist policy from any government, but surely the government's going to have to give some kind of guidance here to banks to say you cannot arbitrarily just take people's accounts away from them because you don't like their politics. And in this case, I, I don't know what the state still is, but... Um, I think the taxpayer, you, me, and every viewer and listener to this program, you know, we part own this company, and so uh, you know, I think we should be asking some tough questions. You know, when we bailed them out, I think the expectation was that you know they would go back into the market, they'd make money more sensibly than they did previously, and they would pay back the taxpayer for keeping them alive. But it seems like you know our taxes and our money is being used is to m them to not just monitor Nigel Farage, but, you know, 52% of the country voted for Brexit. Are banks like uh, NatWest, the parent company of Coots, really saying we don't really want the business of Brexit? That seems to be the underlying message of, uh, of this investigation. Banks should do what banks do. Supermarkets should do what supermarkets do. Leave the politics for customers to 
teenagers to decide. And you know, we're free citizens. We shouldn't be bossed around by bureaucracy. No, exactly right. And of course, we can't leave you without mentioning the consultants who are going on strike tomorrow, which kind of sums up, I would say, the state of Britain today. Uh, people who, on average, make about £128,000 a year. And I stress that it's not all consultants, it's just the ones that work with the BMA, basically. Um, it's an extraordinary thing for them to do, isn't it? I mean, people are waiting on an NHS waiting list, waiting for um, all sorts of operations and procedures to be done, and yet these characters, I can't believe it, actually think the public will have some sympathy for them. Well, I sometimes wonder whether I should retrain as a nurse, um, <laughs> Mike, because I could then say, as a nurse, I think you should be shot. You know, there's, sort of, there's an authority... <laughs> that people attach to health professionals that, um, you know, doesn't attach to uh, people like us, journalists or whatever. They do have a moral authority, so I'm not sure you're entirely right that the public won't have sympathy with them, but I think it must be running thin. And um, you know, NHS managers have said pretty starkly the NHS is absolutely at its limits now. People will die today, tomorrow, over the next few days of this strike mm. that wouldn't have died, who wouldn't have died otherwise. And that's, you know, we talk about lots of issues um, in our in our chats, but this really is life and death mm. stuff. And uh, when the public finances are clearly under enormous pressure, it does seem entirely the wrong time for junior doctors to try and make up... Um, what they think of deficiencies mm. in their pain. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. Tim, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. I'm glad you, your makeshift laptop held up under the strains uh, of all of the latest kind of technological difficulties that we all face. Uh